That was probably the, the, the greatest lesson in college for me, that no one's going to give you anything, so you got to figure it out. And that led me to producing my own work. From Florida State, at the end of my time, I started working at Shakespeare festivals and started getting professional jobs. I, I remember my first job, I played Caliban in The Tempest, and, and they gave me a check for $750. And I was like, you're paying me? I, I, I get money? 750 college kid that's yeah. like a million dollars oh more <laughs> back then in the, in the 90s no it's 2001 <laughs> wow i'm old <laughs> 2001 doesn't sound too long ago but that's 20 plus no, years no, ago you can't right now with that because that just happened to me the other day and i'm like yeah and no oh my god wait yeah. were any of you alive oh, in god. 2001 okay you wanted to i think you were born in 2000 you were just born Oof. Can oh, I see what I mean? Wow. No, don't, because I got you by at least a year. <laughs> One year. <laughs> okay, maybe 18 months, but not much. But anyway. Well, anyway, I left Florida State. I went, I, I, I did some work in London. I was, and, then I, and then I wanted to go to L.A. Mm -hmm. That's where I wanted to be. Well, that was, the, that was where everybody, the pilgrimage, right? That well, was, yeah. the funny thing is, like, my the, the other four in my group, they're like, we're going to Broadway. We're going to be Broadway stars. And I was like, oh, I, from theater aspect, right, yeah. right, right. I'm sorry. But I yes. said, no, I, I can't. You can't make money in theater. Thank you. I need to. I need to. I need to live. Mm -hmm. So I was the only one that went to L.A. and the rest of them went to New York. And in L.A., I quickly found out once again, no one's going to give you anything. Nobody cares about your degree. No one cares anything other than what can you do. Who do you know? And how well can you do it? And are you somewhat normal? Because <laughs> there's so many weird, crazy people out there. They want to know, oh, like, are you crazy? Boy, this goes back into so many conversations I've had where it's how you slate on self tapes, oh, yeah. all the different. Oh my! Right a, away. Yeah, I should put links below to all this sort of stuff and what you're saying. And yeah. Even what you just said gave me a flashback real quick because I want to come back. But I had a very interesting conversation, and I'm not name dropping, but since we're on the podcast. So a friend of ours is Eric Roberts. And the reason I bring that up is uh, he just finished with Margot Robbie in Babylon. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. the movie Babylon that came out that was a financial, I would say financially it was not a win, but I went and saw it, and I, my, my, my kids as well, because when you're in the industry, you walk away from that movie going, it was amazing. Yeah. Because it was an homage to theater and film yes. and the crossover. Because what you said is back in the day, theater was highbrow and that's where the money was made and film was like oh you like whatever and and there was no money in it and you know obviously and this is real history so it's funny here it is you understood where now it's inverted where yes you can make some money in theater don't get me wrong yeah, but, yeah. but if you are successful in film it's much more of a, a financially uh, rewarding yes. business. Anyway, I didn't yes. mean to interrupt. So yes, go back to LA because. I, but I just had to insert that to say, no, but you know, right. that whole because we talked about Eric, going back to Eric and I. We're talking about um, the just how the industry because he's a legend. He's almost yeah. you know he's older as well. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. got me by a few years, <laughs> and um, and just how the industry changed and he's watched it and now they made this movie and so it's funny you just brought that point up because I always a lot of people come from acting and they. They study theater in school as opposed to film acting. And yeah. there is, I want to talk yeah. about the differences, but finish, yeah. please. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, keep I was here. actually thinking too. I, I think I produced a film with Eric Roberts, or I, or maybe two. I'm not sure. I, you got to go back. I know. I have to go back and look, but I, I do. I think I've done one or two with him. But I, I, now I'm like, what is it? Maybe you can look it up. Yeah, we'll find we'll, Yeah, we'll, Eric Roberts and IMDb. See if we, I feel like we've worked. I think I said it. Yeah, exactly. Maybe in one of the cross movies. But anyway. Okay. Um, uh, so I, I got to LA and I started out doing extra work. I was on ER and I and I was super excited because you call a number. They, you know, they have your picture on file. And oh, if God. and if you look right, mm -hmm. uh, now uh central casting. Central casting. Oh my gosh. And if you look right, they'll say, okay, it'll show up here and then I was like, that was easy. Right. 150 bucks at the time. I was like, this is great. Actually, no, it was non-union, so it was $54, but I was still right. excited. <laughs> so I did that for a long time. And then um, as I started doing more work, I, I really wanted to see how set worked in LA. Oh, that's. I think that's the most valuable. That was super, super invaluable to me because I didn't know, I knew how theater worked, and oh. but I didn't know. You found it? So you 
Which one? Oh, yeah. I wrote and directed that. That's why. There you go. <laughs> she knew no hair grow up there. <laughs> All right. So. But I think I was in another one with him, too. Um, we'll have to put that. But well, look at that. They're all every, our research. Our crap. I like this because in the morning, everybody's actually on point. But, yes. you know, when we're doing these at 10, 11 at night, we're drinking. Everybody's zoned out. So, so we got a crack research team right hey, over. I like this. Look it. This I like it. good. All right. Um, I'll just, oh, you know, not to, not to belabor the story. From, from extra work, I really just decided I need to be... I don't want to be moving furniture, which is what extras. Yeah, that's what I was. Right. I want to be on the creative side. So there's two things I did. Number one, I started networking and meeting as many people as I could. Number two, I started producing my own short films in 2005, <laughs> uh, before YouTube was actually yeah, YouTube. Right. And and I I did one film, a short film called Black Inside, about a black guy who's coming out of the closet about being white. He thinks he's white and he's, and he's really, his friends thinks he's white. He knows he's black, but everyone thinks that he's white and he's coming out about being black. That's and great. It, it went viral at the time. Like I was going to say, now 000. imagine now. Oh my gosh, people people canceled. Like, yeah, I would be canceled. And like, there'd be some like identity thing where you wouldn't be canceled. because True. People be like, no, like. <laughs> that's true. They'd be like, no, leave him alone. No, it's, it's okay. Not, don't laugh though. Don't laugh. That's how he feels. In, uh, see, I'm going to identify as a black man now yeah, from here on out. And you could be you black man. Right. In your <laughs> I was Remington Wallace Burnett. Oh, um, that not Waverly Wooding. That's why I thought of the name. Oh my goodness! Oh, yeah, that's oh, great. My goodness. But yeah, that that got me into the industry, and I uh, and I, I had my first meeting with an agent. And at the meeting, I only had like maybe eleven dollars, and I saw a homeless guy who asked me for money. I didn't want to give him my money because I only had eleven dollars. Yeah. I said, you know what? I'll buy you. My favorite burger is a number twelve from Johnny Rockets. Oh, huh? and I was hungry, but this guy was hungry, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do a good thing. I'm going into a meeting. Let me buy this guy a number twelve. I bought him a number twelve. And bring the guy the number 12. It smells so good, Victor. I hand the guy the number 12. I said, I couldn't give you any money, but I got you lunch. He takes the burger from me. He looks at it. I walk away. Kid you not. He throws it at the back of my head. He says, what am I going to do with this? I can't drink this. And I look at the burger on the floor, and I think, does the five-second rule apply to the outside? Because <laughs> that was all I had left. Anyway, wow. I go up to the meeting and the agent said, hey, you know what? I watched that whole thing happen down there with you buying the, whole, the, the guy, the burger, and, and he threw it at you. I, I want to sign you. I haven't seen you do anything, but I want to sign you because I like your heart, kid. And that's, that got me started. Wow. And Is then that... she ended up being an agent of William Morris later on. So she called me when she was with William Morris. You've always been great. You've always been nice to me. I'm at William Morris. You want to come with me? <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. And then I just, it was just who, how I treated people, really. And then, I mean, I, I did did good work, but right. but a lot of people do good work, but a lot of people are jerks. Yeah. So it made a difference. And that and that that was my start. You guys all all tune in and you know, hopefully get some value. You know, give us some comments below. Um, we'll put some of your links and I want to say thank you so very much for yes, educating everybody out there and yay, everybody, round here. Woo! Thank you, thank you.